Chapter 6, Learning Objective 4. Estimate merchandise inventory using the gross profit method and the retail inventory method. The two methods used to estimate the inventory dollar amount in inventory are the gross profit method and the retail inventory method. Both methods are based on the calculation of the gross profit percentage in the income statement. Let's assume the following information. We have sales of $15,000. Next, we want to determine the cost of goods available for sale by taking the opening inventory of $4,000 and adding purchases of $12,000 to end up at $16,000. Then we deduct the ending inventory of $6,000 to determine the cost of goods sold to be $10,000, which is 67% of the sales, $10,000 divided by $15,000. The gross profit then is $5,000 calculated as $15,000 in sales, less $10,000 cost of goods sold. The gross profit percentage rounded to the nearest whole percent is 33% or $5,000 in gross profit divided by 15,000 in sales, which means that for each dollar of sales, an average of 33 cents is left to cover other expenses after deducting cost of goods sold. Estimating ending inventory requires an understanding of the relationship of ending inventory with cost of goods sold. For example, let's say we don't know what the ending inventory is, but if we know our cost of goods available is $16,000 and the cost of goods sold is $10,000, then we can determine that ending inventory should be $6,000. Alternatively, if we don't know what the cost of goods sold is, but can estimate the inventory on hand, we can determine the cost of goods sold is $10,000 based on the $16,000 available for sale less the estimated $6,000 in inventory on hand. The sum of cost of goods sold plus ending inventory is always equal to the cost of goods available for sale. So knowing any of these two amounts enables us to calculate the third amount. Understanding this relationship is the key to estimating inventory if either the gross profit or retail inventory methods are used. Let's start with the gross profit method. This method assumes that the percentage of gross profit on sales remains approximately the same or consistent from period to period. If the gross profit percentage is known, the dollar value of the ending inventory can therefore be estimated. Gross profit is estimated by applying the gross profit percentage to sales. From this, cost of goods sold can be derived, namely the difference between sales and gross profits. Cost of goods sold available for sale can then be determined from the accounting records based on the opening inventory plus any purchases. The difference between the cost of goods available for sale and the cost of goods sold is the estimated value of ending inventory. So as a demonstration, assume the following for Pete's Products Limited. Let's say the average gross profit percentage is 40%. Opening inventory at January 1st, 2023 is $200. Sales for the six month ended June 30th, 2023 is $2,000. Inventory purchased the six month ended June 30th, 2023 was $1,100. We can estimate cost of goods sold in ending inventory like this. We're given our total sales of $2,000, and we can start our cost of goods sold calculation by determining the cost of goods available as the opening inventory of $200 plus purchases of $1,100 for a total of $1,300. Assuming we don't know the cost of goods sold or ending inventory, we can work backwards from the gross profit, which we don't know exactly, but can estimate based on the information provided where the gross profit percentage is 40% of sales. This means that the estimated gross profit would be $800, calculated as $2,000 in sales, times the 40% gross profit percentage. Then we can determine that cost of goods sold must be the difference between the sales and gross profits, so $2,000 in sales plus the $800 estimated gross profit means cost of goods sold is estimated to be $1,200. We can also determine this as $2,000 in sales times a 60% cost of goods sold percentage since the gross profit percentage is 40%. Then we can determine the ending inventory must be $100 based on the difference between the $1,300 cost of goods available for sale less the $1,200 cost of goods sold. You should pause the video at this point to make sure you can follow all the calculations through on this example. Now, where might we use the gross profit method? The gross profit method of estimating inventory is very useful in situations when goods have been stolen or destroyed by fire or flood, 
when it's not cost effective or possible to make a physical inventory count. The second method is the retail inventory method, which can be used when inventory items are consistently valued at a known percentage of cost, known as a markup. A markup is the ratio of retail value or selling price to cost. For example, if an inventory item had a retail value of $12 and a cost of $10, then it was marked up by 120%, or 1.2, which is 12 divided by 10 times 100. Markups are very commonly used in clothing stores. To apply the retail inventory method using the markup percentage, the cost of goods available for sale is first converted to its retail value, or the selling price. To do this, the markup, or the ratio of retail to cost, must be known. Assume the same information as before for Peter's products, except now that every item in the store is marked up to 160% of its purchase price. So if an item is purchased for $100, it's sold for $160. Based on this, opening inventory purchases and cost of goods sold can be restated at the retail value. Cost of goods sold can then be valued at retail, meaning that it will equal sales for the period. From this, ending inventory at retail can be determined and then converted back to cost using the markup. For this approach, we want to set up two columns, retail and cost, and fill in the information we know, which is the opening inventory of $200 and purchases of $1,100, for cost of goods available of $1,300. Then we can determine the opening inventory and purchases at retail based on the 160% markup. The retail value of opening inventory is $200 times 1.6 or 160%, which is $320, and the retail value of the purchases is $1,760, or $1,100 cost times the markup of 160%. Now we can determine the cost of goods available at retail to be $2,080. Next, we want to determine the cost of goods sold at both cost and retail. Since the sales are $2,000, isn't that the same thing as the retail value of the item sold? So cost of goods sold at retail really is the same as the sales of $2,000. And then if we divide by the markup of 160%, we can determine our cost of goods sold to be $1,250. Now that we know the cost of goods sold available for sale and our cost of goods sold, we can determine the estimated inventory. At retail, that's $80. $2,080 goods available for sale, less $2,000 cost of goods sold. And at cost, estimated inventory is $50, calculated as $1,300 in goods available for sale, less $1,250 cost of goods sold. We can also prove the $50, by taking the $80 estimated inventory at retail and dividing by 160% or 1.6 to arrive at a $50 cost. Or by taking the $50 cost and multiplying by the 160% markup ratio to end up at $80. Notice, however, that this proof only works when the markup ratio does not change. The retail inventory method of estimating ending inventory is easy to calculate and produces a relatively accurate cost of ending inventory, provided that no change in the average markup has occurred during the period.